As I sit at the outskirts of the ruins, I come to think that perhaps just reaching the actual ruins is a challenge in itself for some of you out there. And that is why the next few guides will focus on three mobs that stand in your way. To begin, depth worms are on the menu. But be careful, so are you. You'll soon know that entering what is known as the wild biome comes with varied results, as it isn't just one single place. You have the pond and cave lichen section, usually really close to the ruin's entrance. The light bulb planes, at least that's what Beardo calls it, seeing as there's a bajillion light flowers everywhere. And then there's the village biome, that should also sit fairly close to the entrance of the ruins. It is entirely possible to find these Slytherin suckers just about anywhere within these branches, so get a move on. So, depth worms. What's the word? Well, a non-boss type mob with 900 health that can potentially deal 75 damage is one not to be taken lightly. You may though come to find that handling them is fairly simple, but this is don't starve people. Anything can kill you if you ain't ready. And with the added negative sanity aura on top of being incapable of being set ablaze or turned into a wormsicle, a group of these guys can overwhelm you quickly. Oh, did I also mention that they can hide and ambush you too? You see these, these are called mysterious plants and they litter the place. Picking them nets you what is called a lesser glowberry, an item mighty useful later. But depth worms love using their lure to get you to bite. So if you aren't ready, they might get a free munch in and leave you scrambling. But when it comes time to killing them, how do we go about it? Well, worms will always attack once resurface for a second or two, and attempt an attack again, but will not resurface a second time until the cycle restarts. So, do what we always enjoy doing, and smack them dead with your meat. And that simple, repeatable cycle makes kiting two or four or more of these wormies rather straightforward actually. Just keep them on the same attack pattern, and you'll be able to dwindle them down one by one. Good luck. But hey, if you don't want to fight them all yourself, why not bring a Rocky Posse along with ya? Worms are no match for rock lobsters, no matter the stage of growth your companions happen to be in. So this is a great strategy for folks afraid to fight alone, or just happen to struggle to kite efficiently, be you on console or whatever. Oh, and you can always lend a hand with one or two while they are being distracted. So what's all this loot we are getting? Well, those plants are netting you lesser glowberries, a food item that will get you 12.5 hunger and 3 health at the cost of some sanity. If you or other creatures happen to eat it, you will actually emit a light radius for about 60 seconds. But they are also fuel for a fantastic item we will discuss soon, and can be used with Hutch. But glowberries are what the worms be dropping. A far better foodies, at the same penalty to sanity. Furthermore, upon consumption the emitted light radius will be 90 seconds, and it is a much better fuel for that item we talked about. But who the heck is Hutch? This is Hutch the much better and cave exclusive version of Chester. Glowberries and light bulbs can be placed within him to have him emit light himself, and he will also follow you all the same as Chester up above. And you'll need to find Star Sky to make that happen. Yes, it's a fish in a fishbowl. More on Hutch before we enter the ruins. For now, I need you to return to the surface to construct these Moggles. Using but one of those glow berries we've been getting, you'll also need to craft two electrical doodads while also playing a couple rounds of whack-a-mole for me. But with loot in hand, go ahead and craft one of the best light items in all of Don't Starve, and you'll see why in a minute. 
Who knew the deep dark caves would be so flippin' dark? And a lantern is good and all for navigating it, but when it comes down to it, it doesn't actually admit all that much light to illuminate what's ahead of ya. Enter Moggles, an item that will allow you to bloody see everything. And these puppies will make navigating the caves and the ruins all the more easier. Just make sure to keep them fueled up with them glow berries. Hear that? That's the sound of something wanting to munch your booty. Depth worms will attack the player in similar fashion to hounds through periodic wave attacks. And you'll know they are coming if you hear those rumblings. Don't fret, the first couple waves will be small, but just like hound waves, they will grow larger the longer you ain't dead so, which is why setting up arenas like this one here is a great option to combat the waves. Find an intersection of branches like this, invite your lobster friends over for dinner, and then invite the guests of honor, only to just have them be killed. Now that's hospitality. So there you have it everyone, a guide on sending those depth worms into the depths beyond and how to use what they leave behind for your own pleasure. Hopefully the wild just became a little less so with this knowledge on the beasts, but don't get comfortable, more horrors dwell down under. Take care folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.